Now this is Condor Airlines Airbus A330-900neo. They own 18 of these aircraft and today I found a way for this airline to save up to 25 million euros every year on fuel by a revolutionary new design. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the A330neo indeed. And Condor had a good idea with buying many of these airplanes. After all, it is the most fuel-efficient long-haul aircraft in 2025. See, with a beautifully shaped wing with these beautifully shaped winglets, it saves so much fuel. While the cockpit may not be new and state-of-the-art, in fact, it's kind of outdated, the streamlined body of this airplane, made out of mostly, I think, aluminum, on par with those beautiful Rolls-Royce Trent engines, make an extremely efficient airplane but everybody with every airplane with every airliner there i think is one thing to improve and that is the nose area because it is the area of the fuselage that creates the most drag and the most fuel usage after all we have the actual nose itself and then we have a relatively unstreamlined bump right here for the cockpit windows Nope, this creates an incredibly high aerodynamic drag to have an aircraft shaped like this. So I have come up with an idea that might just be the idea of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Airbus A330neo Neo Neo. As you can see, this is what I call Streamline, yes. You may have heard of this airplane right here, the X-59 Quest by NASA. It is one of the first airplane designs that does not feature a cockpit window, as you can see right here. Why the X-59 wants to be a supersonic aircraft that flies faster than the speed of sound without creating a sonic boom. How is that achievable while well, through designing a plane that practically cuts through air like an arrow? How by, you know, actually shaping it kind of like an arrow, but also removing cockpit windows entirely, which would destruct the aerodynamic airflow. And this idea I'm using here as well. If you have a completely streamlined body like this, we can lower the drag so much in comparison to having these windows. In fact, this flight simulator fully simulates this model here as a flight model, and it's come up with the number. Whereas the normal A330neo has a drag coefficient, as it's called, of 0.76, this plane now has a drag coefficient of 0.70, which means we have around 8% of drag reduction on the fuselage, which is a crazy amount. ChatGPT did some calculations and estimated that Condor Airlines could indeed save 25 to 26 million euros per year on fuel alone, plus significantly lower the CO2 emissions, but we don't care about the fucking environment. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a bit of a problem though. How do we fly this airplane? Let's take a look into the cockpit. It's obviously not very usable anymore. We have uh, kind of like a black barrier surrounding us. And yes, while we, for example, can land a plane, you know, blindly by using the autopilot and stuff, um, just the art of taxiing is a bit, uh, impossible. Like, where do we know where to go? Like, seriously, by the way, this is what the Condor liver looks like. I try to, like, make it funny and have, like, half green and, yeah. How do we know where to go? But, you know what? I have a solution for this. If you've ever flown an A330 as a passenger, you might know that it has cameras. There we go, that's our solution. So I've actually added a camera into the cockpit. The way to activate it is through opening the cockpit door. Um... Yeah, you have no idea how hard it was to set this up, honestly. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. We have a camera in front of us. Now, um, as you may know, camera quality in airplanes suck. So that's something we have to improve on, but it kind of it is on, after all, the design that the X-59 uses as well anyway. And look, we can actually see all the relevant information. We have an FPS count of literally five. Okay, just technically, we would have to um, make the camera a bit better quality. So we can see right in front of us that there's a nine here. Uh, uh, you know what? The worst part is that I, I haven't really been able to figure out how to change oh my god this is trippy the pivot of the camera so the where the plane camera actually points so uh, we don't really see the sky oh uh, where are we go oh okay i don't even know where the location of the camera is i'm trying i mean taxiing from outside view works well all right i can see the taxi line that we want to go but we wouldn't really need all this anyway because after all modern airplanes are able to you know practically take off themselves even and we could use the built-in map that most planes have to navigate around the airport but we can see taxiway alpha runway one six indeed and that is the runway we're going to use now now i would wish to have a little bit better camera quality but you know it's just what we have to deal with after all this is just a <laughs> 
it's, it's not even a screen. It's just a hologram. Anyway, look, we are entering runway as we can see. Let's turn left here. Oh, oh, okay. I've entered grass. Well, it turns out the camera is actually situated somewhere here. We could find a way to flushly put it into the nose, though, and that would change a lot. No, technically, this is completely possible, and we would solve a lot of problems that planes have. See, windows are a big structural weakness for an airplane. After all, hole in any shape is problem, and we don't have hole anymore. Well, we have hole here, so we'd have to make the fuselage a lot less structurally capable if we remove the window here in front. Also, we would have we wouldn't have to deal with all the windshield uh, de-icing and stuff. What we also wouldn't need is these big ass windshield wipers that kill a lot of um, drag. You know what I mean? Anyway, we are now getting onto the runway one six. I think. Um, I think maybe. Uh. Okay, there you go. Runway 16 identified. I can see that by the compass right here. Let's go take off. I think we should be on the runway. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been able to taxi onto the runway. Let's put the flaps down. Looking good. And we can see this 5 per second camera of frames is uh, showing on the center line. Let's see if it works. Let's see if we're able to take off. Look at that. Runway 16 is right there. Where you have 80 knots on the clock, looking good. I'm trying to hold center line. It's a bit hard to do with this camera quality. It feels like we're moving in slow motion. Okay, 130 knots and rotate. Yes, and we're over able to rotate quite quickly after all. Oh my God, the quality's bad. Mainly because we have a lot less drag and stuff. Let's put the landing gear up, pause the type rate, and we can literally see what is in front of us. That is insanely cool. I'm flying a A330 without windows and it actually kind of works and well the thing is now that we've reached like a thousand feet we don't even need to see outside and real life anymore anyway we're flying ifr instrument flight rules the autopilot flies we're not even supposed to look outside that's what pilots train for we're supposed to fly by map and as you can see this has worked out well now granted we have a bit of a restriction now with our design we wouldn't be able to land down here at this airport curfew why because it doesn't have an ILS system. And this plane can only land at airports with ILS Cat 3 now, where auto land is supported, because of course we're not going to land by hand. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the autopilot of the Airbus A330. We are right now on approach to London Heathrow, probably. Uh, well, at least the map says it. Uh, we don't really see a lot. Damn, the quality is bad. Anyway, what this plane, of course, has this is a good auto land system. And we're going to use that today. Put the flaps out. And this is generally how landing works in an A330 like that. Here we go. Put the speed mode on. Everything is managed by the airplane. Everything is auto landed. And we see some London suburb. Uh, now landing gear down. Yeah, I mean, this is the exact reason why Hellstorms and an airliner is not that big of a deal after all. We can even see the runway from here. We can arm the spoiler. Yes, this airplane will fully land on its own now. Cat 3 Duel is on here. Auto throttle is on now. We can see the runway in front of us. I hope I'm just going to sit back and relax. And watch the screen right here. That even shows already a runway ahead. Looking good. Runway coming closer. This is perfect. This is so perfect. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, Good. It's just landed on its own. I think. I think we've landed. Stop. Just land now. Touchdown. All right. Reversers. Max. Auto brake on. We are on a runway. I think. All we need to do now is hold center light. Yes. In the normal use case. We don't need to look outside for a landing. Wonderful. And we've saved a few tons of fuel on our long haul flight. But Swiss, what if um, the ILS system failed? Uh, then we're uh, cooked, especially here on this system right here. We're uh, completely uh, cooked. Like um, everything here is just off. It's extremely awful to actually hand fly a plane here. Let's probably try to do a hand flying landing. Honestly, this camera system really doesn't do justice for my genius idea. But let's see if I'm able to land either way. It's actually not looking looking that bad, is it? Okay. Oh! Oh! Oh no! Okay, there we go. We've landed successfully. Um, let's go ahead and put... Let's stop. Uh, I hope we landed on the runway or something. I don't even know. 
That was definitely an insanely bad landing. Sorry for uh, breaking the landing gear there. Yeah, okay. But can you imagine this with a proper camera system? You know, to have screens like they have on actual simulators. That would actually make a completely flying airplane. Now, of course, we're kind of dealing with a few problems with redundancy here. What if the camera breaks? Big problem. Maybe you'd have a backup camera that works as well. That's redundancy. Oh, what in case of a dual engine failure? Do you, uh, I actually wondered, what happens if the electrics fail on this airplane? So all engines failure right there. Oh, and that shuts off the camera. That can't be good. Um, okay, we've lost the camera and we've all lost also autopilot. We've lost literally, we're, we're dead now. But this never happens unless you're flying air transit. Okay, let's put the rammer turbine out now. There you go, rammer turbine is out. Interestingly, on the A330s inside the wing. I didn't know that. Problem is that doesn't actually power the passenger camera, the IFE camera. So, uh, we only see our reflection. So this flight simulator model is definitely worse than what we could make in real life. We can make a backup generator for the chimeras and for uh, the monitors. That's no problem. No, if you want to do it properly, like the X-59 is going to do, then we could have tremendous fuel save. Question now is, could we all get all this certified um, by the FAA? I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. But this might just be the future of flying. We might just see within our lifetime planes without windows in the front or in the past your cabin. So thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.